Royal Navy sailors and Royal Marines have been operating alongside their United States Navy and United States Marine Corps comrades on amphibious exercises in Norway and Scotland. The United Kingdom Littoral Response Group North Deployment sees commando forces and amphibious ships HMS Albion and Royal Fleet Auxiliary Mounts Bay, plus Type 23 warship frigate HMS Lancaster deploy around Northern Europe and Baltic Sea in the coming months. The task group has so far been working closely with the USS Iwo Jima Amphibious Ready Group off the coast of Scotland, on the United States-led exercise Ragnar Viking off the Norwegian coast and on operations in the North Sea. The training included Royal Marines of 45 Commando being taken ashore from HMS Albion by the United States Marine Corps impressive heavy lift Super Stallion helicopters from the 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit, as well as moving to locations inland via the unique Tiltrotor Osprey aircraft. Lieutenant Commander Bob Powell, the task group's staff aviation officer on board HMS Albion, said, The value of this training with our United States allies cannot be underestimated. It allows us to test, prove and learn from even the most simple of daily tasks up to concurrent helicopter load lifting and replenishment at sea between three very large ships in very close quarters. It's a skill set not many nations can carry out as efficiently and safely as the Royal Navy and United States Navy. It has been a genuine pleasure to have worked with our United States partners, not only over the last five days but also during the weeks and months of planning that preceded this. Their humor, enthusiasm and incredible generosity shows that the special relationship between our two nations and armed forces remains as strong as it has ever been. The task groups combined initially on a wader training package, which was an opportunity for sailors and commandos to refresh their amphibious assault skills. This included land, sea and air training with United States helicopters to ensure the two forces could work together effectively. Captain Simon Kelly, commanding officer of HMS Albion, added, the Royal Navy continues to demonstrate its reach and versatility with both the carrier strike group and littoral response group deployed. Additionally, our strength alongside our NATO allies was demonstrated by coordinating 15 ships in close proximity off the Scottish coast. This marks the beginning of an active year for the 21st century Royal Navy. United States Navy Captain Darren Nelson, the Commodore of Amphibious Squadron 4, was able to visit HMS Albion during the training. He said, it was a pleasure visiting the gracious HMS Albion. The United States and United Kingdom strategic partnership has been forged over the past seven decades and is built on a foundation of shared values, experiences and beliefs. The United Kingdom task group then headed for Norway for the United States-led Ragnar Viking, which included the USS Iwo Jima Amphibious Ready Group, 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit, USS New Mexico, USS Ross, USS Arli Burke, France's FS Normandy and Norway's HNOMS Skjold and HNOMS Otto Sverdrup, plus United States Navy, United States Marine Corps and United States Air Force aircraft. Poland and Lithuania also joined the exercises in an impressive gathering of NATO military might.
The littoral response group North deployment will now be further tested in Exercise Highland Dagger, a 11-day tactical exercise, before moving into Northern Europe and the Baltic region for operations with NATO allies. HMS Albion, HMS Mounts Bay and HMS Lancaster form the littoral response group alongside 3 Commando Brigade and have been working with the USS Iwo Jima Amphibious Ready Group, which includes the 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit, in Norway on a week-long amphibious exercise. Commanding Officer of HMS Queen Elizabeth, Captain Angus Essenhai, said, the fact that the Royal Navy is able to deploy a littoral response group and a carrier strike group simultaneously is also significant. Very few other navies can do this, and it underscores the United Kingdom's substantial and enduring commitment to the security of Europe and the North Atlantic. That last point is of particular relevance at a time in which Russian Navy activities in the North Atlantic are on the increase, especially in regard to long-duration, deeply submerged operations by its increasingly sophisticated submarine force. According to the United States Navy, Ragnar Viking was intended to showcase high-end NATO cohesion, solidarity, and credibility in the Norwegian, North, and Baltic seas. Specific elements of the drills included a demonstration of long-range strike capabilities from the North Atlantic into Lithuania, amphibious landings in Norway, plus anti-submarine warfare and surface action group operations in the North Atlantic. All those scenarios would seem to be clearly predicated on potential Russian military activity in the wider region, with the Baltic states, including Lithuania and Norway, which shares a long border with Russia, identified as critical flashpoints of any future possible confrontation between Moscow and NATO. As such, the North Atlantic is also a critical springboard into the Arctic region, the strategic importance of which continues to grow. It is notable, too, that the submarine USS New Mexico, before it joined Ragnar Viking, had made a rare and high-profile port visit to Trumsa in northern Norway, an event described as a signal of deepening United States security cooperation with Norway in the Arctic region.